All right, Lords of Olympus, we're ready for your close-ups. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 depictions of Greek gods and goddesses in movies. For this list, we're looking at ancient Greek deities who made an impact on the big screen. We're looking only at fully-fledged gods, sorry Hercules, who are recognizable as such in the film. Number 10. Zeus, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief. Thunderclouds. But no lightning. Stolen. Put simply, Sean Bean Zeus is a badass, which is really a must when part of your job is to keep all the other gods in line. And besides, Bean has a right to be angry. Someone has made off with his precious lightning bolt, which is like taking Thor's magic hammer. Let's face it, Bean has the physical presence required to play a magisterial god. Give me the bolts, lightning thief. Intense and fierce, anyone bold enough to steal a lightning bolt from him is signing their own death warrant. Bean's screen time is limited, but his Zeus fills the room whenever he's in it. Number 9. Dionysus, Fantasia. Okay, so Walt Disney's version of Dionysus may not satisfy purists. After all, he's played for laughs in the pastoral section of the classic Fantasia, and most Greek depictions of the god of wine do give him a robust, if not so portly, physique. But there are many things that the film does get right, including the presence of centaurs and satyrs as companions. <laughs> Dionysus's amiability and sense of joie de vivre also shine through, not to mention the central role that wine plays in any tale involving him. True, the sequence lacks the bacchanalian frenzy associated with the god, this is Disney after all, but it does hint at the sensuality inherent in the character. Number 8. Hermes, Hercules Why, Hermes, they're lovely. Yeah, you know, I had Orpheus do the arrangement, isn't that too nutty? Disney similarly played fast and loose with the gods and Hercules, but it still included several memorable depictions. Adopting a self-aware postmodern tone, the film's take was refreshing. My lord and lady, the titans have escaped, and they're practically at our gates! Take Hermes, for instance. The messenger of the gods was always considered quick and cunning, yet somehow in Paul Schaefer's interpretation, he finds a way to incorporate a laid-back style into all his swift movements. Schaefer makes Hermes hip, which seems strangely appropriate. After all, he was also the god of transitions. So being up to date on what's happening fits his personality. Ah, Hephaestus has been captured, my lord. Everyone's been captured. I've been captured. Hey, hey. <laughs> Number seven, Zeus, Clash of the Titans. Release the Kraken. It's Zeus again, and it won't be his last appearance on our list. He's the king of the gods, the ruler of the skies, the dude with the thunderbolts. But he also seems unable to keep his privates inside his toga, which is part of what sets this film in motion. Their insolence has a price. Like children, they need to be reminded of the order of things. Set an example, brother. You see, in addition to being our hero, Perseus is also Zeus's illegitimate son. Liam Neeson makes a memorable Zeus, capturing the regal air that's part of being both a king and a god. But Neeson is also adept at hinting at the burden that goes with being a ruler. Crucially, he makes it believable that this often somber, sometimes raging god could fall victim to the plotting of his brother Hades. There is still a demigod in Argos, brother. Number 6. Zeus, Clash of the Titans. Release the Kraken. Okay, same god, same story, but different film and different actor. And what an actor! The role of Zeus may not have been the most challenging that the immortal Sir Laurence Olivier ever undertook, but he still made it memorable. The 1981 telling of the Perseus story is a bit ham-fisted and campy in style, but silver screen legend Olivier makes it work. Hundred good deeds cannot atone for one murder. Olivier thunders appropriately and knows how to take hold of a scene and command center stage. Watching him grab a scene by the horns, there is no doubt that this Zeus is the rightful king of Olympus. I forbid any revenge against Perseus, he has done. Well. Number 5. Eris, Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas. Oh, this is going to be fun. As the goddess of strife and discord, 
Eris is not one of your better known Olympians because, face it, she's really a big pain to have around. But that didn't stop Michelle Pfeiffer and the DreamWorks animators from making her into a top-notch mystical presence in this Sinbad adventure. As cunning as she is beautiful and enticing, Eris is also spiteful and vindictive, and holds a pretty cynical view of humanity. So, I'm going to let you live. But there's just one little thing you have to do. Get the Book of Peace and bring it to me." She's adept at plotting and at manipulating others to get what she wants. As a devotee of Discord, she also delights in creating situations that have people at each other's throats. Not a nice lady, but she makes an indelible impression. Oh, all right. You have my word as a goddess. Number 4. Ares, Wonder Woman But Zeus' son grew envious of mankind and sought to corrupt his father's creation. What would it be like to live forever? As Sir Patrick Morgan, also known as Ares, David Thewlis gives us an all-too-convincing answer. Cynical, jaded, and shrewd, his Ares is definitely a glass-half-empty kind of guy. He despises we humans for our vices, seeing only the worst in our nature and history. For that reason, he orchestrates World War I to wipe us out. My dear, I don't want to fight you. But if I must... The God of War? According to him, he's actually the God of Truth. Thewlis delivers a masterfully sinister performance, oozing bitter pessimism and power once his character is outed as Ares. Thank goodness Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman thinks we still deserve a chance. Let's see what kind of God you really are. Number 3. Thetis, Clash of the Titans The child, Perseus, is the son of Zeus. That is why he is to be saved. Although in mythology Thetis was a minor water goddess, when Dame Maggie Smith plays her, she gets promoted to the Olympian pantheon. And why not? Thetis may not allow Smith the opportunity to really exercise her considerable acting chops, but that doesn't stop this actress from making the character come to life. Perseus is protected by Zeus himself. There is nothing I can do. Even when it's just her face poorly superimposed over a fallen statue head, Smith's Thetis is as imperious as they come. Yet audiences feel some sympathy for Thetis, whose vengeful motives are rooted in her love for her mistreated son. No, I beg you, be merciful. Number 2. Hades, Clash of the Titans How long has it been? How long, brother, since you've seen my face? And now for a completely different take on Hades. Sure, this Hades also has a grudge against his brother Zeus, and similarly tries to get back at him through one of his sons. But there's no jocularity or mumbling wisecracks for this Hades. In Ray Fine's lethally vengeful interpretation, this is a Hades who's been wronged for too long and will stop at nothing for revenge. This is the will of Zeus, the will of your father. He's dank and malevolent, oozing sourness even when at rest. And he captures the character's sly cunning equally well. This is one Hades you don't want to turn your back on. Until I possess my full power, you will be my weapon. It's interesting how many characters we've seen repeat on this list because there are so many different ways to play these gods and goddesses. Looks like we're on a roll here, but before we get to see which godly film depiction tops our list, we'll take a look at these honorable mentions. I'm not expecting you to forgive me, but I want you to know that I'm grateful. You win, my lord. That is, the battle, not the war. He belongs in the underworld, not here. You do not tell me where I belong. For the moment, let them enjoy a calm sea, a fresh breeze and each other. The girl is pretty and I was always sentimental. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Hades, Hercules How sentimental. You know, I haven't been this choked up since I got a hunk of moussaka caught in my throat. As stated before, the Disney Hercules takes a fresh and irreverent approach to the gods. And this is especially true in the unforgettable performance of James Woods as Hades. 
The God of the Underworld is indisputably the villain here, yet he's also far and away the most entertaining character in the film. Words tumble out of a mouth that is a perpetual sneer. Wood's vocal performance is as dry as they come. I wonder if maybe I haven't been throwing the right curves at him, Meg, my sweet. He makes jokes and wisecracks constantly, but they only serve to distract from just how deadly serious his scheming is. And when Woods turns off the humor and goes for the jugular, the effect is all the more powerful for the contrast. I am about to rearrange the cosmos, and the one schmeal who can last it up is waltzing around in the world! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.